Good morning, and welcome to another trying to be sunny day here in Winnipeg. And I did come back to the model table, and we are going to have a fairly long rollback. And uh, so I'm going to try and not flap my gums here a lot right now. Uh, we uh, we got some stuff down on on the. Uh, superstructure there and uh, I, I think the best thing to oh you know what yesterday I forgot to include the sunrise I had it in my computer it was all ready to go it was I think it was actually nicer than this morning's sunrise but uh, there's no use running yesterday's sunrise because it's sort of something in the past whereas the one that's playing right now well that's uh the way it was just maybe an hour or so ago. Uh, anyway, uh, why don't we roll back and see how it is we got to this place. And uh, then we'll continue on. Okay. Now, continuing right along here this afternoon. I think what I'm going to do is uh, fasten this one down the same way as that we did the other three. In other words, we're going to just take some extra thin and use a hypodermic needle to get it underneath and just let it sort of wick its way around under there and then slowly meld everything together. It does make a bit of a mess on the deck, but it's, it's so minute that you have to use the macro lens to see it. Now, speaking of the macro lens, let's get it on because I know you all want to watch me put the needle up against the bottom there. Well, I like to watch it too. But it's funny, I, I don't get to see it as good as you do until later. Okay, let's try and do this now in such a way that I'm not going to have to do any touch-ups later. Oh, goodness sakes! All right, I put so much on that it it actually wicked its way right up the back. Well, I think it's in the right place at least. Okay, all right, we'll get out the we'll get out the little paintbrush. Oh my goodness! Just sort of feather it out a little bit there. And once again, I'm pretty sure that once this dries, it's just going to blend in with the rest of that deck. Okay, probably only about four minutes has passed since I painted that, and you can see it's already starting to blend. Anyway, moving back about, oh, five centimeters. Okay, I, I can see that I'm going to have to uh, reposition my camera because it's being blocked by that uh, gun tub. Now there are no markings on the deck, so a person just sort of has to, you know, guess where this would have gone. And and you can see that there's a door there. Now, you would you would think the most logical way for this to go would be to face the the gun, but then it's kind of in the way. And, and according to the manual, it goes with the, the this one with the door to the to the uh, back, and it goes approximately there. It, it's closer to this door that you see than it is to this door. All right, let's uh, see if we can do a better job here with our. Uh, you know, I I just looked in the monitor, and, and you can't really see too good. That uh, splinter guard is in the way. I'm just going to recompose here a little bit. Okay. Now, what I'm going to try to do here is use this this gun. You can't see it, but I'm going to try and use it as a as a steady rest, so that when I squeeze the the uh, plunger here, it doesn't shake. All right. I think we did a little bit better. There is some 
discoloration going on there, but I think that's going to be all right. Okay, you can see the one that we just put on. It's just to the left there. Now, according to the manual, the other one looks like it's supposed to go right around here. Once again, there are no markings on the deck. And according to the manual, it is supposed to have the door facing this way, like towards Tony's tweezers. But that does not make any sense because because the, the gun that it would probably be serving is, is the other way. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it the other way. Um, probably going to knock it over here trying to turn it around. There. Now, I'm going to put it something like this. Now, according to the, the manual, oops, careful boats. Um, according to the manual here, it's the ones that I put on, the first two, they might have been supposed to have been out from the uh, bulkhead a little bit. Um, as I keep saying, there is no markings on the deck to indicate exactly where they're supposed to go. Uh, this one, I'm going to put it right there. Um, I think maybe what I will do with this is instead of trying to use the uh, extra thin, which is going to wick its way out into the planking, maybe I'll put a, a little a little bit of glue right on the bottom there and just set it in it. At least that's the plan. Just let me uh, recompose here a bit. Okay, change in plans here. I'm not going to put it on the planking. I'm going to put it just off the planking and I have applied some glue to the bottom. Uh, I think it should be just a little bit more to the left. Oops. That was a mistake. I looked up at the monitor so I could see better and then I poked it. All right, let's... Oh, I lost my uh, thing here. Okay. Um, let me check the monitor. It should really go a little bit to the left, I think. Uh, that's going to have to do. That's going to have to do. Now, I don't know what that is that's sticking out there, but it just doesn't look right. And once again, I'll probably have to uh, go over this with the panel line accent color and just lightly darken it. Because as I've mentioned, A light mistake will show up a lot sooner than a dark mistake will. Okay, we'll let that dry. And then I'll see if I can touch it up very, very lightly. I think it'll be better than it was. Okay, a little bit of time has gone by here. I just left the camera sitting in the same position. I've got some panel line accent color on here. I just want to darken that deck tan. And also this little thing that's sticking out here. As I tried to mention before, a dark mistake will show up a lot less glaringly than a, a light mistake. Now I'm, I'm just going to leave that. I think that once that all dries, it we're not we're not going to notice that. And uh, even if we did, we'd have to look very close to see it. So, uh, oh, another thing, the side of the ship that we're doing right now is the side that's going to go against the back of the case. So I'll be doing the other side, probably off camera, and you know Murphy's Law. If the, if the shutter button isn't pushed, um, you know, the record button's not pushed, nothing will go wrong. Okay, it is a beautiful afternoon here in Winnipeg. It is, uh... 26.1 Celsius outside right now. 
beautiful, you might say, fall afternoon. And uh, I have removed the the uh, little pieces of photo etch railing from the self-locking tweezers and painted the place where the tweezer was blocking the paint from before. That sounds complicated. Uh, anyway, it's all done. Now, I, while I was doing that, I was thinking about the, the rest of this railing that we've got to do here. There's, there's quite a few lengths of long straight railing. And I think that the time to paint these is while, it's, uh, while it is on the fret. Uh, it makes a lot more sense to me. And uh, even if I had to give it, you know, three or four coats of real light paint, uh, I, I should start now. Now, I, I do believe this evening I, I'm going to give it its, its first coat. And uh, then maybe tomorrow another coat, because eventually we are going to be needing this railing to go around the gunnels on the outside and po possibly for places on the deck, you know, the, the superstructure, like... Uh, like right here, we, we have to bend something. Now, we're, when we start bending it, we're undoubtedly going to be chipping the paint. Uh, unless I was to use the Steinal Res. I don't know how well, well the Steinal Res will brush. I know the Steinal Res is, is a, lot, uh, a lot better paint. At least, I think it is. Uh, what I go by is if I, if I get it on my, on my fingers, it's harder to get off. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens here. Anyway, I don't know what we're going to do yet this later this evening, if I'll come back and do this, but I'm going to uh, call it quits here for a little bit, and I'm going to go make myself a nice salad, low-calorie salad. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, I did only have uh, one piece of pizza, <laughs> even though and the other seven are in the freezer right now. It was hard, I'll tell you. I almost had an extra piece, but uh, I thought, no, <laughs> let's save it. So anyway, uh, yeah, um, maybe I'll be back later this evening, and maybe I won't. We'll see what happens. Okay, a couple of hours has gone by here. I've had my salad, and I've got such a powerful hankering for something sweet. I'm sure glad that I do not have a bag of chocolate chip cookies in the house, because they'd probably be all gone by the time I go to bed tonight. Now, this is the Steinal Res Gray. And this is the Stanley Res Black. It's a, they're a, a flat paint. Uh, an excellent primer. Uh, they don't seem to last very long before they get lumpy. At least that's been my experience. Other modelers have uh, expressed pro problems with it as well. But when they're new, they're wonderful. And, and they're, you know, they're, it's still liquid. In fact, I just shook them up in my uh, paint shaker there. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is adding black to the gray. The gray is probably only a, a third full. I've used quite a bit of it over the for the last three years, four years. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to add a bit of black to it and, and darken it because I want, I want the railings to be darker than that. But I don't want them black either. You know, I'd like them like the 77 and uh or even maybe slightly slightly darker so i'm just going to add some black to this shake it up and uh do a little test here and just see if it if we got what i like i don't know if i'll get this stuff uh, painted tonight or not but once again we'll see how it goes i guess i uh i don't need to do this on camera okay I added uh, black to this three times, and on the third time I shook it up again in the uh, in, a, in my paint shaker. And uh, my hope is it's going to be darker than that, approaching that. I'll just put a drop on there, smear it around. So what do we got going on here? Uh, 
Well, I can't really tell for sure until it dries. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit more black, maybe. Try and get it just a little bit darker. It's, it's pretty much like the 77, though, isn't it? I mean, look at this. Uh, maybe I should stop while I'm ahead. Yeah, maybe I'll stop while I'm ahead because what what's happening now is it's it looks like it's going to be almost a perfect match for what we've already got here. Um, yeah, I'm going to quit. Okay, it is getting on here this evening, but I think I might be able to get one coat on here. kind of thick to me. Well, maybe not. Uh, no, it's, it's not thick. I was thinking of thinning it out with uh, something like, you know, Mr. Color's leveling fluid, but then I remembered how, how bad that stuff smells. Yeah, it's just going to take several coats. Okay, I'm going to do the other half of this the same way. No use uh, wasting film here. Okay, this did not paint on as easily as the uh, Tamiya XF77 did. Uh, it might act though as an excellent primer. I'm seeing some places where it, it you know, I can actually see the photo etch glinting through, like right, right here where I'm touching it, I can see it. And yet, over here, I can't. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll take a look at it with a microscope in the morning and see if it, if it looks like it's covered everywhere. Maybe, it, maybe it'll just be a real good, uh, uh, well, what it's designed to do. It's a primer, right? So it, it might act as a really good primer. And uh, then we'll uh, put the 77 on top of this. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just see how it goes. Um, yeah. In the meantime, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning. And uh, if I zoom right in on that place that I was looking at yesterday, or last night, and if I get right in here and focus on one rail, okay, right now I'm zoomed in as close as I can get. And I would say there is the very slightest hint of a film of uh, Steinl res on there. But you know, that did not paint right. There, something's gone wrong with it. It was getting kind of stringy, and uh, when, when it was sort of drying a little bit, like when I was brushing it, it had sort of, sort of a weird stretchy. Uh, yeah, there's, there's just something. Something's wrong with it. Uh, I, I'm sure it's, it has nothing to do with the fact that I I mixed the black in with the gray. It it was it was kind of like that before. This is this is probably why when about I guess maybe a year ago now I was trying to use it in the airbrush and it just wasn't working. Uh, it definitely would not work now in the airbrush, even though the airbrush would have done a much better job on on this stuff. Now just let me quickly interrupt here. The reason I keep saying that the airbrush will do a much better job is because I do not want I do not wish to mislead. I don't want people to get the idea that because I'm not using the airbrush, it's not as good as a paintbrush. The airbrush will do a much better job than a paintbrush. This is my personal choice at this stage in my life. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do here yet. I might, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try and give it a second coat and see what happens. Uh, if worse comes to worse, I can, I can always soak it in something 
and, and get the cyanide rays off. Now the cyanide rays does, does not dissolve uh, in solvent the same as easily as, or in water, as easily as the Tamiya XF paints do. Now that's a good thing if you want to have a good a good uh, adhesion to the to the to whatever it is you're painting, but it's a bad thing when it comes to like, you know, wiping it off or cleaning your your paintbrush or whatever. Anyway, uh, let's just move on here. Okay, I was very disappointed at how the first coat went on, but I have just in the last few minutes given it the second coat. And it is, uh, well, I'm noticing right, right there, I can see photo etch glinting through, but I would say it is 99% covered now. Um, there are little tiny blobs uh, in places, like in the, in the corners where the, where the stanchion meets the rail, uh, in some places. Uh, I was able to sort of poke them out as I went along, but I was having trouble with uh, uh, this this stuff. It was kind of like rubbery, uh, stringy, rubbery, stretchy, like liquid rubber almost. <laughs> um, I don't know how the liquid mask. That's what it reminded me of. Uh, only it was much more diluted than that. But it was like the way liquid mask goes gets after it starts to cure. Um, now. We're just going to leave this. I, I might give it a third one if I if if there's a, yeah I might give it a third one. It it didn't take very long. It only took me maybe five minutes to do these. So uh, anyway, like I keep saying, let's move on. I would think that possibly this one here is going to be the most difficult one to place, except that it will have the ability to stand itself up if I can stand it up now I've already got it bent at almost perfect 90 degree angles which is what it's supposed to be I got this thing in the road here when I should maybe move it a little bit In all likelihood, it's going to fall off onto the uh, plywood. I'm going to uh, reposition here. I'm just doing a dry run. I just want to see how it's going to go. That's uh, it's going better than I thought so far. Anyway, let's uh, put on the macro lens here. Okay, I'll put that up there as sort of a bumper. It's hard to get it exactly right. At arm's length, you're not going to notice if it's, you know, half a millimeter out. I think it's I think it's pretty close. I'd like to have it a little closer to the edge. I'm probably going to end up knocking it off. All right, let's just leave that there. Now my my plan is to try and place the holder downer here because I know that if I touch it with the uh, CA glue anywhere. It's going to stick to the applicator, but if I can place the holder down there right, like I'm almost there right now, then I can I can at least glue the ends, you know, like like right in here, and right in here. So I'm going to have to reposition here because the camera's kind of in the way.
and we'll see if we can just get a tiny little snifter of the Insta set here. Hmm, this isn't gonna come. I'm gonna have to try it off camera. Okay, it's a good thing I did because it just sort of gushed out. Okay, we should be able to carefully lift this off of there now. Yeah, I'm just going to reinforce that now. Now, needless to say, I will have to repaint. Okay, that's pretty close. Now please don't go run down and fill in that little vent. Got to repaint there too now. But at least the railing's glued on. Okay. Okay, probably about five minutes or so has passed here now. I think it's safe to lift this off. Yeah, okay, I'm going to uh, repaint and I think the best way to maybe do this is is do the uh, 77 deck, the darker first, and then go up to the deck with the 66, like this is the 66 right here. Okay, I'm actually reaching inside of the protective hoops here. Sort of feather it out into the original. Once again, I'm pretty sure when this dries, now along here, just sort of reaching through. Just trying to cover up the, uh, the CA glue. Whoops. Now I will be coming up with the 66. I think.
think maybe I should be going on the inside there. I'm noticing I got a stain. Maybe I very carefully reaching on the inside again. You know this isn't working. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to reposition and I, I guess I'm gonna have to do this off camera. Okay, I've got everything tilted about 25 degrees away from us here. And I just want to go underneath here and try and touch that up. And once again, I'm hoping that this was going to blend in. Just try and go right up to the very edge and cover up where I got the 77 down on the on the side there. Oh, don't want to go into the deck. Okay, now I'm going to have to uh, re-angle here and, uh, and get so I can get in and do the other side of this platform. But I'll have to do that off camera. I, I think we've pretty much got it here. I, I might be actually making things worse, but I don't think so. Okay, now did I go across the top of this? I think so. Okay, let's quit. Okay, I've got it repaired more or less. At least I've got it painted here with the the uh, 66 up to where it meets the 77 on the deck. Uh, I kind of went a little bit over on the deck, but at arm's length you can't see it. In fact, from a lot closer than arm's length you can't see it. Now, this is the first time I'm trying this in here. And this is my thinking. Remember, we were worried because I'd put that, uh, I'd put that, uh, this thing in, in the uh, gun barrel to fill up the crack. And now this wasn't going to fit. Well, it, it probably isn't. But, but here's the story. If I can let go of it now. Oh, for heaven's sakes. It is sure a good thing I can edit out the dead spots. Okay, now I want to get that positioned just right in there. And I want to get this one stanchion right in, sort of tucked in behind this if I can. Like that. Okay. Now, if I can pull the other one forward so that it will touch the, the the inside of the splinter rail, maybe I should be using something a little bit different. I'm going to reposition here, and then I'll tell you my idea. Now, okay, I suppose I could leave it like that because my idea is that this is supposed to be a gate that that swings open so that's you know that they can drop a ladder down the side here and uh you know sort of like a Jacob's ladder type thing and uh, and uh, in an emergency they can get out the front of this. But I'd like to swing this over. I'm going to end up dropping it, aren't I? And I just maybe if I come in from the back here. Uh, 
I wonder if I was to bend the pin. Okay, now I can sort of come in like this. Excuse my finger. I just can't seem to get it. I wonder, maybe if I was to put a little bit of CA right, th right there, even though it's not quite in the right place, then I could swing it. Either that or just leave it partially open. Then, then clearly it's a, it's a gate. Yeah. Maybe I'll push this bottom in just a bit if I can. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, I am sure that you could have seen what my problem was and I couldn't see it from my angle because I'm quite a bit off to the right. But the problem is that the bracing for the splinter rail comes in at an angle and I couldn't see that. So I, I was not able to swing the gate any further than about like that. And I kept trying to pull it out and pull it out and it was coming up against this part here and I, I couldn't see that. Okay, I'm going to just uh, glue it just like that in a partially open position and it's actually quite believable and maybe I'll, I'll touch up the uh, the deck here afterwards uh, and it won't, won't take very much, just a little bit of uh, CA thin right there. That was a little bit. Well, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna blend in pretty good. At least it's not gonna fall out of there. And I do believe it wicked along the bottom rail that's on the on the uh, on the deck. So it's gonna be good and strong. And we'll we'll retouch this up later. Okay. Now I was gonna say that completes this side, but I was just noticing we've got to put the. Uh, I've been calling these little things uh, life rafts, but I should maybe start calling them Carly floats. And I think I did learn that two, three years ago on the Bismarck, and I, I sort of forgot. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got to put the Carly floats on this side yet. And these three pieces here are the same as the ones we just put on. And I'm probably going to put them on the other side off camera. Now the other side is the camera, it's the side that we're going to uh, actually be looking at when it's in the case. This side here is going to be up against the the back of the case. So uh, yeah I'm going to try and do the other side a little better and I can do it a little better if I don't have the record pressed. Murphy's Law. It, I'll be right back. Okay, so I run into the kitchen and I pick up the kitchen phone because that's the closest at the moment because I forgot to bring the cordless here to the model table and it's like the line is dead and then finally something kicks in and it's obviously a machine and it says, hello, this is a call from Visa Security Department. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. Where, where was I here? I, I think I was saying that uh, I'm going to wind this episode up, and uh, uh, all being well, uh, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.